Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Release Trauma from the Body with Biodynamic Breathwork, the seven-week journey to connect with your authentic being to liberate physical and emotional pain and experience peace. I'm Lisa Bonice, and I'm really looking forward to hosting this Q&A conversation for the Shift Network, where we'll explore the teachings of Gitem Tonkov and address questions about his upcoming seven-week course, Release Trauma from the Body with Biodynamic Breathwork, which begins Thursday, December 10th. And a little later, I'll explain how you can participate in the course, even if you can't attend the live sessions. But first, I want to introduce our guest. Gitan Tankov is the developer of the Biodynamic Breathwork and Trauma Release System, sharing a mastery of body-oriented therapies that evolved from over 20 years of learning, exploration, and work with countless clients and groups around the world. The author of Feel to Heal, Releasing Trauma Through Body Awareness and Breathwork Practice, Gitan continually leads practitioner trainings and experiential workshops with his unique blend of creativity, depth, and playfulness while growing the Biodynamic Breathwork and Trauma Release Institute and its global community of friends and colleagues. And in just a few minutes, we're going to open up for your questions. But first, I want to welcome Gay Ten, who's going to begin our time together by leading us in an opening meditation. Welcome, Gay Ten. It's so good to see you today. Thank you, Lisa. Great to be here. So, I would love to start by asking everyone who's present with us at the moment to just take a deep, full breath and close your eyes wherever you are. Make yourself comfortable. I'll guide you to about 10 minutes of a breath and movement oriented meditation. So you have the opportunity to connect with your body, connect with your breath, connect with how you feel in your physical form, connecting to your felt sense. So wherever you are, sitting up with your back straight, closing your eyes and noticing how the breath is moving in your body right now. Is it shallow? Is it more deeper? Noticing where it's flowing naturally without you doing anything, without you trying to adjust your breath in any way. Just taking a deep, full breath and notice how your body expands with the breath, how it's opening up. The breath is movement. And when we take a deep, full breath, there's already movement that's happening in our body. So notice which part in your body this movement is happening in. And if it's in your chest, I invite you to put your hands onto your chest, connect to your chest, connect to your breath. And if it's in your belly, Notice this opening, this expansion in your belly as the diaphragm is passing, pressing down into your abdominal cavity and your belly sticks out a little bit. So allow yourself to feel that expansion. And wherever your breath is moving, keep your hands on to this, on this place without doing anything, without trying to change anything. And notice as you're breathing in, this expansion is going and as you're breathing out, the breath just brings everything down. So each out breath is a let go. You don't need to do anything to exhale. There's no action needed from you. Your body exhales on its own. And when you're breathing in, that's an action, that's an expansion. So as you visually connect with the, with the interior of your body, Visualize that at the place that you're breathing in, there is it is rubber balloon that with each breath, it expands in all directions. And as you're breathing out, this balloon comes back to its original shape. And continue to breathe this way. So we will breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And each inhalation is a half a circle and each exhalation is another half a circle. So the breath makes complete full circle. There is no pause between inhalation and exhalation. And keep observing this movement that happens in your body with the breath. Keep imagining this rubber balloon that is opening, expanding with inhalation 
and coming back to its original shape when you exhale. And as you continue to breathe that way, shift this balloon to about the level of your throat. Imagine that this balloon is filling this entire place, your throat and your neck, even including your lower jaw in it. And as you breathe, you begin to very gently start to unwind your throat and neck and jaw through the movement. It continues to flow in this very beautiful, soft, undulating, connected movement. And the concept of movement that it's coming from the core, it's coming from the interior of your body and manifesting itself on the outward movement. So deep, full breath in through the nose and out through the mouth and you continue to move that way for another few breaths, focusing your breath around your throat and the jaw. And with the next breath, let's move this balloon down into your chest area, which includes your entire chest and your shoulders and also your upper back. Imagine this balloon is filling up your entire chest cavity. As you're breathing in, it expands, your whole rib cage expands. And when you're breathing out, it just releases all of the air without squeezing, without pushing anything. As, as I said earlier, each out breath is just a let go. It's just a surrender. It's just releasing without having any action to be present in this. So breathing in, you can even open your arms with the in breath and breathing out, you can cross your arms over your chest. And once again, breathing in, expanding and breathing out, letting go. And since we are mostly water, more than 70% water, try to embody this fluid quality of the fluidity in your movement. Yeah, so breathing with this opening and letting go and allowing a little bit of a sound to emerge as you breathe out. And as you breathe this way, there may be some physical sensations begin to arise up to the surface. Just allow them to be. There's nothing you need to do about that. Just include that as part of your experience with the breath. Breath begins to activate us in many, many ways. It, it increases our sensitivity of our own physical body. So something that may be dormant right away begins to come up to the surface. And with the next breath, bring your attention a little down just below your diaphragm into your upper belly. Put your hands onto your upper belly and breathing in again, in through the nose, deep, full breath. Let yourself feel how your diaphragm contracts and pressing down into your abdominal cavity and your belly sticks out a little bit with the breath without pushing your belly out, without forcing anything again. And it's a beautiful, big, connected breath, flowing breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, right into your belly and then allow your belly to relax, letting go of the tension of holding our belly tight. When, when we relax our belly, the belly sticks out and you probably all have seen this image of a laughing Buddha with the big belly and that represents the let go in the belly, the relaxation in the belly. So breathing in deeper again, expanding, allowing your belly to expand and letting go, letting your belly to relax and stay for a few more breaths in this way, deep and full, let them flow without interrupting between inhalation and exhalation, keeping it in a beautiful connected circular way. 
And with the next breath, imagine that this balloon is filling your entire body when you're breathing in. It's a full body breath. So when you're breathing in, your whole body expands. Every cell in your body is vibrating with life. And every time you're breathing out, you're just letting go. You just feel like your whole body drops, allowing the gravity to work, to actually pull you down down a little bit and then again breathing in expanding in all directions and breathing out and letting go and stay with that breath for a few more breaths and relaxing and now feel into the space that you are created for yourself right now just be a witness be a watcher of your own inner world. Just a few minutes of breath can create so much shift in the body, so much sensitivity comes up to the surface. We become more sensitive when we unlock our breath. Breath and emotions are very much connected and we stop our breath because we don't want to feel. So when you consciously start to breathe deeper, you, you feel more. You are allowing yourself to be more sensitive to your own physicality. And now once again, take a deep full breath and open your eyes and maybe stretch your body, allow your body to go into this very beautiful spinal wave for, for a few seconds. Yeah. Just letting this wave come up from the pelvis, move through your entire spine. Doesn't get stuck here in the back of the neck until another wave comes. It's a beautiful connected wave. And shifting your breath to flow normally. However, normally you breathe in and out through the nose. And opening your eyes. And let's connect again. I'll be very happy to answer any questions you might have about biodynamic breath work or the course that we will be starting next week. All right. Thank you so much, Gitan. That was that was just lovely. Uh, and as you mentioned, we have the rest of our time together to dive into our viewers' questions as we prepare for the upcoming course. Again, that's called Release Trauma from the Body with Biodynamic Breath Work, and it begins Thursday, December 10th. And if you want to check out the website and learn more about the seven-week course, you can visit biodynamicbreathworkcourse.com to see the full description. So let's go ahead and get into some questions. If you have a question for Gitan, just go ahead and type it in. I'll be happy to pass it along. And in the meantime, we've got a couple questions already waiting. There's one that came in uh, just now saying, this is from Trudy, who said, I noticed while following along with your exercise that I'm not able to breathe as deeply as I used to. I'm not a smoker. Uh, could this merely be a sign of aging or is it more probably lack of exercise from being stuck inside for all these months? And what can I do to improve my ability to take deep breaths? Yeah, it's a beautiful question, uh, Trudy. The breath and movement are very, very closely connected, as I mentioned in the exercise. And actually the lack of movement will, will have your breath go into more shallow mode. So to move your body will open up your breathing. And the, the more you move, the more breath will actually start to flow. And the best way that I found for it to move, to, to open the breath, is to go into the unwinding, undulating movement. So this is the movement we use a lot in biodynamic breath work. And this movement supports an opening of fascia, of the connective tissue. And a lot of the times right now that people stuck indoors, many countries uh, have imposed lockdown because of COVID and this sedentary lifestyle actually makes us numb. It makes us uh, contracted. We don't want to feel and breath and feeling and emotions are very much connected. So the more deeper you begin to breathe, the more you move your body, the more emotions you will, you will be feeling. So my support for you is to 
move your body as much as possible. Move it in a very soft, unwinding, undulating way and consciously bring your breath into your movement. All right, thank you. I hope that was helpful, Trudy. Uh, we've got a question here from Roberta who says, that was intense. How does breathing help release trauma from the body? Yes, uh, it's, it's a very good question. And <clears throat> the way this works is that trauma is an interrupted response. And this interrupted response, most of the time, it's a response as a fight or flight response that's stuck in the body or a frozen response that's stuck in the body that's connected to past traumatic event. So biodynamic breath work uses six elements. One of them is breath. It's a foundational element of biodynamic breath work. So when we begin to breathe deeply, we activate our energetic body. We activate our energy in the body. Breath means energy. When we start to breathe deeply, we raise the energetic level. And when this energy wants to move through our system, it begins to dissolve that tension that is related to past traumatic event. So when that tension is, is dissolved, the fight or flight or frozen response that's stuck in the body from the past traumatic event has the chance to complete itself. So we are completing fight or flight response through the breath work. Another element that we use is movement. Another element is self body work, touch, and sound is another element. Emotional expression is another element. And the final element is meditation. So all of these six elements come together, make up the biodynamic breath work, which supports the completion of the interrupted cycles in the body. And that's how we heal trauma. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, thank you. Uh, here's another person uh, with feedback on the exercise that you just offered. Nina says, I began coughing a lot about midway through the exercise. Uh, making a sound breathing in didn't happen. Breathing into the upper belly was more difficult. Yes, uh, it happens often that when we begin to breathe, bring in a little bit deeper breath, right away the the past tension that is stored in the body, the chronic tension, it wants to release. And the release that happens in the throat, and this is the area that's related to expression, to creativity, uh, our throat and our jaw area, the cough comes very often. And that's a, a charge of energy that wants to come up, that is coming up, and it's meeting the block here. So it the energy wants to make its way through. That's why coughing, it comes up and it's encouraged to actually keep coughing until something opens up and the, the breath is actually filling the entire area and something can let go. And it, it's not uncommon, it happens quite often in our work. So we include the self body work into it. So uh, usually if it was in the session, I would encourage you to, to open up uh, by uh, working a little bit these areas right here, the SCM muscle, sternocleidomastoid, and that's a, a cable-like muscle. So we work around this area. We work underneath the jaw with the base of the tongue to create a little more opening. So your vocal expression can happen, that the sound happens on the exhalation. And the sound is very important element in this work because the most powerful musical instrument we have is our voice. And when we allow our expression to flow, this area opens up. Yeah, it's if you look at the shape of our body, it's kind of like a bottle and it comes into a bottleneck here in the neck. So there's more of the space of, of the energy to move in the body. And when, when it comes up, it kind of meets this damning kind of effect. So we want to open that up. So making a sound using your voice and actually coughing by clearing this area works very well to open it. Hmm. All right. 
Uh, here's another question. I, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. I believe the name is Terrell. Uh, the question is, how long and how often can we or shall we do this? And let's go ahead and expand this to breath work in general. How often do you recommend doing it? You know, this is a type of exercise that can be done on a daily basis. You can never breathe too much. Breath is actually healing. It supports us to connect deeper with ourselves. It connects us to deeper to our physical body, to our emotions. And once we connect with, to ourselves, the connection to others can happen. So, so this work can be done on a daily basis as your daily practice. If you want to do it uh, not so often, every other day, even once a week, as long as you are connected to your experiences, uh, as long as you are connected to what you are actually feeling throughout the exercise, that's where it's very important. We work with the concept of felt sense. So we, not, we don't just breathe to, um, to access alternate states of consciousness. We actually breathe to connect deeper to our physical form through the concept of felt sense, through following the, these felt sensations in our body. So please practice breath as much as you desire. You can never overdo it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, now, you've already sort of touched on this, but Holly's sending in a question that says, is this helping physical or emotional trauma or both? It actually works for both. Physical and emotional trauma both have a very similar effect on our physical body. So we contract during the traumatic event. We are alone. We are by ourselves with our uh, emotions. We, we're being flooded by stimuli. So prevent the injury, we contract. Emotional trauma, our body responds in exactly the same way. So when we are, just let me backtrack a little bit what trauma is. So any event that interrupts your, um, your flow, your, your, any event that, that that interrupts the, the completion of the fight or flight cycle is when fight or flight becomes in, interrupted and incomplete, that's trauma that settles in the body. So whether it's emotional or physical, it has the same effect. And the effect is tension and the physical tension that accumulates in the body. So what we do with the work, we support this completion of the fight or flight or coming out of the freeze response and going into the movement. All right. Well, while we're on the topic of emotional pain, uh, we've got a question from somebody asking, can I use breath work to let the pain of a divorce go? I would say so. You can, it's, it's such a, a widely applied uh, modality that you can use it pretty much for anything. It's, it, it's just, uh, whether it's a divorce or separation, it, it's, it's, a, it's actually what you're encountering right now. It's the sense of something that's been lost, uh, maybe a pain of separation, a pain of uh, loneliness. So breath will actually help you to support, will support you to connect deeper with yourself and to transcend the pain is to actually go into the pain, but very slowly with awareness, allow yourself to feel it without overwhelming yourself. But to deny yourself feeling pain, to cut off from pain, it will still be there and it will be coming back at all random times. But just very gently moving into uh, what you're feeling and allowing yourself to feel and breath because it makes us more sensitive to our physicality to our emotions is one of the best ways to do it hmm. okay uh, let's uh, switch tracks just a little bit here this is from doreen who says I have panic attacks accompanied by hyperventilation. Uh, would you please first address why the inability to catch my breath is always part of a panic attack and then perhaps offer a way to prevent these attacks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the times during the panic attack, we, we go into hyperventilation. 
that it's it's just a process that begins to happen in our body. But a way to to prevent these panic attacks is to work with what we call your own inner resource. So inner resource, it's meaning a place of safety and connection in your physical body. So knowing what this place is, identifying this place and using it by shifting your physical attention to this place that exists within yourself and it exists there at any point that you want to just shift your attention to it and find it, it's there. So when we go in into a panic attack, when it begins to arise, it feels like this energy takes over completely and we lose ourselves in it and we lose ourselves in this overstimulation, in this overactivation. But the, to avoid that, to, to not allow this to escalate to that level, just the moment that you feel it starts to come on, it's about shifting your attention to the place in the body which, which represents safety, connection, spaciousness, positive physical sensations. And if you have trouble finding this place in, in your inside, in your physical body, in your internal resource, there's external resources that exist. And nature is one of the most amazing resources. Pets, friends, um, anything that supports you uh, from the outside to feel safe. So by not as allowing this panic attack to escalate, by shifting our attention to something that you feel safe will support your system and changing your breath as well. So when the panic attack begins to arise, instead of going into this, this very intense hyperventilation, slow your breath and inhaling and stretching your out breath for a longer period of time will start to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. So you can inhale on the count of two, exhale on the count of six, for example, and keep practicing this sort of breath and it will right away begin to deactivate this sympathetic activation, which panic attack is. It's overstimulation. So we don't want to come into the overstimulation. We want to keep monitoring ourselves, self-regulating ourselves so we don't overcharge. Hmm. Okay, thank you. That's fascinating. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we're here with Gitan Tonkov learning about his upcoming course, Release Trauma from the Body with Biodynamic Breathwork, which begins Thursday, December 10th. And you can log on to biodynamicbreathworkcourse.com for all the details and to register. And in the meantime, we've got a few questions already uh, lining up here. Um, let's go to, uh, here's a question from Charles who says, uh, I'm already doing holotropic breath work. How is your work different? Mm -hmm. Yes, holotropic breath work is focused on exploring alternate states of consciousness. Biodynamic breath work is focused on embodying. So we are working with the breath to stay present to our physical sensations. It's not necessarily geared towards uh, alternate states of consciousness, even though that can happen as a part of the process. But the key here is to stay present to our felt sensations as we're breathing and using our felt sense to go deeper into the, the expression of what's happening with our physicality. So uh, the, the movement, the vocalization, the emotional expression, the self body work is part of this work. So it's not just laying down and breathing for extended periods of time. We work a lot with pendulation, meaning that we are going through a period of connected breath and then we're slowing down and feeling what's happening. So we're not consciously going in, um, uh, into just um, flying away, dissociating somewhere. So we are going through these periods of activation, sympathetic activation, and then bringing it down into parasympathetic activation. And this, this is done a few times throughout the session. And uh, that's a major difference. The work is about embodying.
it's not about exploring alternate states. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you for addressing that. Uh, here's a uh, question from Donna, who says, I'm fascinated to see that you address holding tension in the jaw. I have TMJ and grind my teeth in my sleep. Will your course address these issues? Yes, we will look at various uh, what we call belts of tension in the body, an oral belt of tension, which is, includes our jaw, our tongue, nose, and ears. It uh, oftentimes that's where we store our expression, that that we store anger, we store frustration and when we don't don't allow ourselves to feel kind of to rub the the expression of what wants to come out. This tension begins to store there. So uh, one of the classes we, we will move through the belts of tension and then we will address uh, each belt of tension or two belts of tension per class. So we will be addressing the jaw and the throat in one class and that will be um, actually addressing the tension that stores around the jaw. You will be doing self body work around the TMJ going into the connection with the SCM also noticing how the tension in the tongue also contributed in the base of the tongue contributes to tension in the throat. So we'll be using breath in combination with self body work to open that up. All right, that's good to know. Thank you. Um, let's see here. So this is an anonymous question. Is it possible for someone to have past trauma uh, reactivated in this course, especially something they don't remember consciously? And if so, what kind of support will be in place to make sure that no new trauma occurs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very good question. We want to our priorities that we want to keep everyone who's participating safe and the, the objective of this course is not to create the new trauma, but to actually heal the old trauma that we carry in our body. Therefore, we go in very gently, we go in very slowly without uh, pushing too much. Uh, we, there's no need that uh, we don't need to, to over activate ourselves. And one of the key elements that we'll be working with is the element of resource. So in the beginning of each course, I will be guiding all the participants to identify their internal resource, to know what their resource is, and to actually go in their own pace and to, to experiment with whatever is coming up for you, but in a safe way. So it's possible that we access past traumas that we don't really remember uh, there is there is a whole part of our life since we were uh, in the mother's womb till about four years old, three or four years old, that we don't really remember what happened. It doesn't mean that we uh, didn't live and didn't experience that trauma. A lot of the developmental trauma actually happens throughout that period. We don't consciously remember it, but our body does. Our body stores all of those memories within the tissues. So if these memories are not addressed, if that tension related to those past traumatic events is not addressed, it stays there. So any interrupted fight or flight response that, that is in the body it is living there, but it's always looking for ways to complete itself. So there will be uh, a you know, a way provided for you to complete that fight or flight in a very safe manner that you are connected to your resource. You are not overcharging. You will have the homework to keep working with the resource to identify this resource. We also have a couple of uh, supporters that will be with us on the course. And if any anybody needs any support during the course, uh, they can go into a separate breakout room with you to support you. So um, there will be a community set up at, during the course. And if something is uh, happening for you between the meetings, you can um, uh, share and uh, we will provide as much support as possible. So we want to support you to heal, not to create new traumas. And we go very cautiously with that. 
All right, thank you. There's actually quite a few people asking this same question, so thank you so much for, for addressing this. Um, here is a question from Martin who says, I've been trying for years to find a non-medicated solution to the ADD that has been sidetracking my life for as long as I can remember. Is there a way to use breath work for this when it's so hard for me to focus enough to pay attention to lessons? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the beautiful ways that this course is guided all the way through. So uh, it's possible for you to let go of the ADD in my understanding. I, I don't want to make blanket statements or promises, but in my understanding from what I have seen, it's about letting go of the of the tension that's stuck in the body. And once that is let go, you're able to stay more present to your felt sensations. So when we are breathing, when we're breathing fully, we're becoming more sensitive. And working with, uh, with our felt sensations in a guided way, so I'll be guiding people into this process. I'll, they will be always talking and connecting you deeper and deeper to your own physicality. And uh, it, it, I don't think you should have any difficulties following that. Uh, a lot of the times there will be um, space provided for you to actually stay present as much as possible to the thread of felt sensation to, so it can guide you deeper. So you're able, you will be able to, to develop the ability to be present more in your physicality without dissociating, without jumping into something else. So that, that's my understanding and what's that I have observed over the years working with people and in groups that it, it works quite well. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, we have another anonymous question here. Um, does addressing the trauma include confronting those that have caused you pain or is it mostly accepting that it's a part of you and it's something for you to work through it, work with? Yeah, um, it's actually that you don't have to confront anyone. A healing trauma means that you are going into your body and releasing the tension that was caused by uncompleted fight or flight. So it has nothing to do with the victim or perpetrator. It's it's really works work with yourself. And sometimes the story is not even important. We don't really go into the story. We stay with felt sensations and that what's connect connects us to go deeper. Trauma makes us numb. It sh it shuts us off from feeling. And the moment we are actually connecting to our felt sensations, little by little, we begin to heal that trauma. So the story is not important. It's not important what happened. It's not important to confront anyone. And it, it, it's just about relaxing into yourself and completing what's been interrupted. All right. Um, looking at the clock, we have time for a few more questions, but before we take those, I'll go ahead and give a few details about the course itself. People are asking those questions and I'm prepared to answer that. Uh, once again, the name of the course is Release Trauma from the Body with Biodynamic Breathwork. And this is going to be a truly powerful seven week journey with Gitan under his expert guidance where you'll learn powerful breath and movement techniques to track the sensations in each area of your body, let go of trauma and find the strength and ability to live your life happily, openly and freely. And the seven week course takes place on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific beginning Thursday, December 10th. And as I mentioned earlier, if you can't join us live, that's fine. You won't miss any of the teachings because you will receive audio and video recordings, transcripts, and all course handouts on your course homepage. Everything's in one centralized location and you get to keep everything forever. You can download all the materials. It doesn't just last for the course of those seven weeks. Also, I want to remind everyone that we offer a no risk money back guarantee on all of our courses and giving you until January 7th to make sure that it's a good fit. We want you to be happy. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can connect with one another. Also, everyone who registers receives the release trauma from the body with biodynamic breathwork bonus collection. 
First, you'll receive a video teaching from Giten entitled, How Do We Hold and Process This Time in Our Bodies? Next, you'll get two guided video meditations from Giten called Open Your Sacral Chakra and Explore Your Personal Power. Then you'll receive a PDF chapter excerpt from Giten's book, Feel to Heal. And you'll also get an additional live bonus Q&A session with Giten. So before we get back into our viewers' questions, let me ask you, Giten, what are you most looking forward to, uh, to sharing in your upcoming course? For me, the most the most uh, exciting part is that I share the guided guided process and to support people to release whatever been they've been holding for years, something that's limiting them. Past traumatic events uh, that stuck in body are limiting, and they limit our ways of relating to ourselves and relating to others. They cut off our heart's energy to to reach out towards the other. And when I facilitate courses, I always see how this, this work, it's it dissolving this, this blockages that we all carry. So I'm very much looking forward to support another group of very beautiful individuals to let go of the, what keeps us separate. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Now, here's a question. Uh, we had to know that there was going to be a question about COVID, considering it's all everybody's talking about these days. Tracy mm -hmm. says, with the great risk of COVID and how it affects the lungs, can we exercise our lungs to be stronger just in case we happen to fall ill with the virus eventually? I would say so, because when you increase, constantly increase the volume of your breath, you're exercising your lungs. Normally, if you were just breathing without taking deep, full breaths once in a while, you're using just the top portion of your lungs. With this course, we will be exercising deep, full breaths. So we will be constantly creating a bigger space for the lungs to, to unfold in the chest cavity. And the lung will be using the full capacity of the lungs. So if you do exercise your lungs on a regular basis, for sure you're creating a, a much, it, 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 it's kind of a protection for yourself that you are using way more of the capacity of the breath. And I would say that uh, if we, we are falling sick because of COVID, this is something that I found that can be of absolute support for us. Anything that we can do to increase our lung capacity will be absolutely healing. Okay, thank you for addressing that one. Here is a question from Marguerite who says, I just discovered that many of my soul pieces are lost because I've had so many traumas. Should I first find a really good shaman who can bring the pieces back to me before I join the course? I don't think that you should do one before the other. And there is a, a, such a shamanic technique that's called soul retrieval. And I'm sure this is what you're referring to, but working with biodynamic breath work will support you to get in contact with your body and it will start the process and once we create the space in our physical body you that you may not even need to go for the soul retrieval it's all in our physicality so we we support you to connect with the parts of ourselves that feel numb that, that are in pain, something that we don't want to feel, something that we've been avoiding. And that is a way to retrieve the parts of your souls that you, uh, that you gave away, that left, that, 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 are, um, that you feel that you need to regain. We are working with the physicality and one has not, nothing to do with the other. You can absolutely uh, do this course and do the soul retrieval process. All right, thank you. Uh, here is a question from Ella who's wondering, can you share any exercises for freeing the voice? The, it's actually a very good question because one of, as I mentioned before, one of the parts of the course is to open up the expression. 
So the exercises that we're using is kind of imagining that there's an open tube that goes from the mouth all the way down into your pelvic floor. And with releasing the tension from the throat, from the base of the tongue, tension from the jaw, we of course open up our expression, our vocal expression. And uh, our voice is constricted because of the tension in our throat, in, in our voice box. So when we begin to open that tension, that relaxation creates more space. So the timbre of your voice improves and, and the depth of your voice improves. So it's not instead of just being right here, it feels like it's coming from your chest. So opening up, creating space here. Um, the exercises that you can do is working with yourself, working with um, work um, in uh, SCM, sternocleidomastoid, this muscle right here, that this cable-like muscle, you can work with that, you can work with the base of the tongue, you can work even inside your mouth with you know, putting a glove on and massaging your uh, TMJ, the masseter muscle, which is the strongest muscle in the body, to massage it from both sides and actually using your voice in toning. So you're taking a deep, full breath and you exhale with the long sound and feeling how this sound, the vibration of the sound affects the throat and it goes deeper into your uh, sternum, into your breastbone. And the, because bones are hollow, they're a great conductor of sound. And this vibration of your own voice will already start to dissolve the tension. Actually breathing with your tongue out, like just sticking your tongue out, keeping it out, not allowing yourself to swallow for a few minutes and breathe. And with the breath, noticing how it begins to unlock all of the tension that's connected to restricting our voice. So finding your own voice, expressing your own voice, that in itself, it, it begins to open up the vocal expression. Hmm. Okay, thank you. That was very helpful. Uh, and another subject entirely. This is a question from Aliyah who says, uh, Kundalini awakening is in process in my body. Uh, the deep trauma, repressed memories of chronic early infant sex abuse. Uh, the energy moves and releases blockages spontaneously. Uh, will your work support or exacerbate this process? Uh, just a bit of a background, the Kundalini energy is just an, uh, a spontaneous opening of the energetic pathways. And uh, if the body is not prepared, it could be compared to just putting way more voltage through a wiring that's not uh, made to support that uh, amount of voltage. So what we're doing with the work is actually supporting your system to uh, to build resiliency. Your nervous system uh, can become more resilient. In that way, because that's the way to do it. And what we do is we, we support the release in what we call um, uh, titration. So we release little by little, allowing the system to um, to constructively release that, that energy that's building up in your body. And working with the resource that I previously mentioned could be one of those uh, techniques. So you don't bring your body into an overwhelmed state. So this course can support you to actually release the body without, release the energy without overwhelming your body. And uh, again, I, you, I actually would, if you are taking this course, I would love to, to know that you are on it so I can uh, be a little more aware who's on it and how I can support you guys. And uh, it's, it's, it, I think it will help you to build the resiliency in your system so you're able to release those uh, energetic charges in a, in a more safe way. All right. Thank you for, for that suggestion. Uh, I hope that people take you up on that. Uh, we've got 
Jordan here is wondering, uh, what were the six areas you mentioned earlier? Um, I'm not sure if he's talking about the, the belts or mm. if there was something else. Yeah, there are actually seven belts of tension. The first one is ocular belt of tension, which includes the eyes, the forehead, the top of the head, and the back of the head. So the energy around the eyes, if it's uh, if we see, let's say, something traumatic, it, it uh, restricts our peripheral vision. So the energy that builds around the eyes also has effect into the back of the head. It's, it's uh, a lot of the times the migraine headaches are related to the tension behind the eye. So we release that. Another belt of tension is the oral belt of tension, which I talked a little bit about earlier, which includes your jaw, no ears moving lower another belt of tension is cervical belt of tension which is the throat and the neck coming down is a is a thoracic belt of tension which it includes your shoulders your heart your lungs and upper back moving lower is um, a diaphragmatic belt of tension which includes your diaphragm and your rib cage Moving lower is the abdominal belt of tension, which includes your abdomen, all of the organs it houses, as well as your lower back. And the last belt of tension we'll be addressing is pelvic belt of tension, which includes the pelvis, all the sex organs, and your legs, all the way down to your feet. So the reason for addressing these belts of tension from the top down is that we are creating the pathway, we're clearing the pathway for the energy to arise from the bottom up, from the pelvis, the energy wants to flow up into the heart, our sexuality wants to flow into the heart, the heart energy wants to flow up into our head, into our mouth, into our eyes, it also wants to flow out into our arms, so for this energy to move freely, we first need to clear that pathway. And we're working with these particular belts of tension to clear them so the energy can move freely through our body. Hmm. All right, thank you for that. And Jordan has corrected me. He was asking about the six elements. So could you go oh, into that as well, please? Okay, yes. So the six elements of biodynamic breath work is first is breath. So we need the breath to bring up the charge to activate the sympathetic nervous system. And we do this to a small degree that we don't overstimulate just enough that we have something to work with. The next element is the element of movement. So to release that activation, we bring our body into the movement. The next element is touch. In this case, we'll be using self-touch. So the touch supports us to open up our body to support that movement of energy. It also uh, supports us to resource ourselves. When we use touch on ourselves, we can either activate or we can slow down. The next element is the sound. So our voice, is the sound that we will be using and the vocal vibration that that will be moving through our body it supports the release it supports the expression the next element we'll be using is emotional expression so any tension that's related to the past stuck emotions in our body, when we begin to unlock that tension and it begins to dissolve, the emotion that's stuck in that tension also comes up to the surface. So it's a conscious emotional expression. This is not going into catharsis or screaming. This is actually being present to what you feel and connecting that emotional expression and how it reflects in our physical body. And the last element is the element of meditation. So a meditation is needed to kind of summarize everything that we have done. And pretty much every other element, all the five elements that I mentioned earlier, is done so we can create space for the meditation to happen on its own. We are actually supporting our witness to grow. 
and use of the felt sense in this work is of paramount important. And how we find our felt sense is through observing our physicality. So meditation is needed at the end to become a witness and to integrate everything that's happened in the session. So these are the six elements that make up biodynamic breath work. And these elements are applied in um, their interchangeable order. We can start with the meditation, we, we can finish with the meditation, but at some point, all of these six elements will be present in each session. All right. Wow. Well, this has just been a fascinating conversation. We're just about out of time here. So I want to thank all of our viewers for being with us today and for all of your wonderful questions. Once again, release trauma from the body with biodynamic breathwork begins Thursday, December 10th. And again, you can visit biodynamicbreathworkcourse.com to learn more and to register. So Gitan, before we cut you loose, do you have any final words for our viewers? Whatever you do every day, leave some time for taking care of yourself through breath, through movement, through meditation. Meditate every day, connect with your physicality, be in nature if, you're, if you have the opportunity to do so. If you have the opportunity to share a hug with someone, to experience some body connection, please do that. And if not, give yourself a hug, feel your own body. Yeah, don't just stare at your devices or, or your phone or your TV. Connect with yourself physically. Move and be present to this movement. Use your felt sensations to connect deeper with yourself. That's, that's all that I have to say for now. Hope to see you at the course. All right. Thank you again, Gita. And it really, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Lisa. And once again, I want to thank everyone who joined us today. On behalf of all of us at the Shift Network, I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or perhaps another one in the future. Have a great day, everyone.